Welcome back to the channel, I hope you're all well. In this video we're going to run through how to set up the Camranger 2 with a Sony camera. In this case I'm using the Sony a7 III. Now before we get into this step-by-step -step process of what you have to do, let's start off by looking at the way I've got my Camranger 2 mounted to the Sony. Now whether I'm shooting photographs or shooting video, the Sony stays in this small rig cage. And this allows me to use a small rig monitor mount um, and that is what I'm actually using to connect the Camranger to. And it just allows me to have the Camranger off to the side of the camera rather than having it directly on top and above the lens because I'm pretty much going to be using studio flash and I'm going to need that space for my trigger. So I've got the Camranger off to the side and what's really nice about this is you can actually set this up in such a way where it's very much um, compact and it doesn't, doesn't get in the way at all. And what I like about Camranger is actually sent me a really nice small USB type C cable uh, which just fits perfectly well. It's not sticking out, it's not too big. Now before you even go into setting things up, you have to be aware that when you're using the Sony cameras, you have to use an SD card within the actual Camranger. Where you think you've got it in, it's not in far enough. So you've got to like use your nail to get it all the way in it's recessed quite deep within the actual unit. And once it's in, taking it out, obviously you push it back in, it clicks, but it doesn't actually pop out. It literally comes out a few millimeters. So then you've got to get your fingernails right into the gap and then extract the card. It's a bit of a pain. Um, it's a minor gripe, but I think they could have made that system a little bit better. Get your card, format it first on your computer, XFAT, quick format, and then get that into your cam ranger. Now the next things we have to do is we're gonna have to go into the menu system of the Sony and then go through the process of setting up the camera so it's gonna work with your cam ranger. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to adjust the remote control settings. Now this setting enables the cam ranger to control the camera and you have to turn this on. We should also set the LUN settings to multi Next, we're gonna go into the USB power supply. This should be turned off, otherwise it will drastically reduce your battery life. And let's go into PC remote settings. Uh, this is where it decides where the images are gonna be saved, and it's recommended to set the still image save destination to PC and camera. Now, obviously, depending on the way you work and what your workflow is like, you can adjust this. For me, I want previews to be quick, coming up on the Cam Ranger. So I set my previews to JPEG only. I don't need raw files or anything like that going to the Cam Ranger. It's purely only there as a monitoring tool. So I set that to JPEG and then the uh, images in my camera are going to raw and JPEG. Okay, so we switched the Cam Ranger on and we've waited for all the lights to appear. We'll then come into our iPad settings. We'll hit Wi-Fi. We'll find the Cam Ranger network. And here we've got ZFI 2.4, I presume that's the gigahertz, and then 5, I always select the first one. We'll open up Cam Ranger, we'll hit the connect button, and we've got that ready. Now it says unable to determine Cam Ranger SD card status. If the SD card is in the Cam Ranger, please try removing it and then reinserting it. Now I've had this issue several times with the Cam Ranger and it's probably the, the weakest point of the Cam Ranger and that is the actual SD card connection. I mentioned earlier on actually getting it in and out is a bit of a bit of a pain but also it tends to do this quite often even when it has been formatted. So I will format the card and it will give me this error, error while formatting Cam Ranger SD card. It won't even let me format it within the Cam Ranger. This can be a pain, so I'm going to do as it says. I'm going to take it out. I'll click OK. And I'm going to put it back in. Ah, firmware version 4 is available. Would you like to update your Cam Ranger? Let's do that. Cam Ranger 2 battery is too low to update the firmware. Please connect to the Cam Ranger and try again. So I'll have to do that later. Let's put the card back in again. Let's see if we have that same issue. Seems to have gone in just fine. We'll turn off Cam Ranger, turn it back on again, and we'll try and connect. Okay, 
we'll update the firmware later. So this time the card seems to have been recognized totally fine. It's a little bit of a bug. Maybe that update will actually improve it. We're going to look at the transfer speed. And before we do that, we have to understand that the transfer speed is going to be affected by the size of the JPEG and the standard of the JPEG that's being sent over. Okay. And this is the same as it was on the Cam Ranger 1. So if I change my settings on my camera, I'm just going to go into my menu settings over here. And I'm going to go to JPEG file um, quality. I'm going to go to extra fine. JPEG image size, I'm going to have it as large. So that for me right now is the highest quality JPEG setting. Put the camera down and we'll take some shots and we'll look at the speed in which it takes to transfer. So I'll take a picture now. One, two, three, four, approximately four seconds. Let's do another one. One, two, three, four, five, six. That took six seconds. Let's do another one. One, two, three, four, four seconds, and we'll do one more. One, two, three, four, approximately four seconds it takes when we've got our camera JPEG quality set to extra fine, and we've got the JPEG size set to large. Let's change it up again, and let's see what we get. I'll just focus here for you. Okay, so we're going to menu, we're going to pick the JPEG quality all the way down to standard, we're going to go JPEG size all the way down to small, and we'll do the same thing again, and you'll see the difference in time, Let's take a picture, one, two, two seconds, let's do another one. One, two, almost less than two seconds. Let's fire a few off quick. One, two, three, done. Okay, so the JPEG quality is gonna determine how fast the transfer is. So if you know you're gonna be only editing raw images and you only need your JPEGs as a preview, then by all means, set your JPEG standard to um, JPEG quality, sorry, to standard, set your JPEG size to small. You're going to get very, very quick transfer. Now for me working in the studio, I'm going to keep my JPEG quality. I'm going to keep my JPEG size at large. I'm going to keep my JPEG quality at standard. I want to have full size JPEG images along with the raw images because there might be times when I only want to edit the JPEG. So I want to have that flexibility. Also, if for whatever reason the raw files became corrupt, at least I would have full size JPEG images. So hopefully you found that little test useful. The speed is not bad and it works quick. When I'm using the Canon camera, it's quicker. The transfer between the Cam Ranger and the iPad, when I'm using the Canon system, it's quicker. We're not having to use any SD card in the Cam Ranger. And I think that is the reason why it's quicker. If you are interested in a range test, again, I suggest you just get over onto YouTube and see what you can find. But that is gonna conclude the end of this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you later.